Hello and welcome back to another video on Inkscape. In today's video we're going to take a look at the live path effect rotate copies. Um, we're going to take a look at how it works, some of its features, and then I'm going to demonstrate how you can use it to create a stylized rose design like this one. Stay tuned. So to quickly demonstrate the features we're going to use rotate copies to create this simple design. So to get started i we'll shift that one off to the side. To get started, I'm going to come up, I'm going to grab my ellipse tool, I'm going to hold down control to constrain the proportions so we can pull out a perfect circle. If we get the selection tool, up the top here we've got some scaling options, the first of which allows you to scale the stroke with the path. So as you scale the path, the stroke um, stays in proportion. I've got that turned off so our stroke will stay the same size. So what I do is press Control D to duplicate this circle. I'm going to hold down Control to constrain the proportions, and I'm going to hold down Shift to scale around the center. So we can drag it in to wherever we want it. Say about there, and then when we release, the stroke width goes back to its original width. So these are the same. I'm then going to drag a box over both of them to select both of them. I'm going to come up to path and I'm just going to go down to object to path and that will convert them both to paths so when we click on our nodes tool we can see all of these nodes around the outside. Next thing I want to do is just draw a line between these two nodes. So over on snapping down the right hand side I want snapping enabled, I want the second section enabled, I want snapping to paths, I want snapping to custom nodes and snapping to um, smooth nodes and also want the third section enable with snapping to midpoints and snapping to rotational centers. So I'm going to come over and I'm going to select the Bezier tool and I'm just going to come up snap to the node at the top and drag a line down and snap it to the node underneath. Press enter and we have a line. The line's a little bit thin at the moment so I'm going to come down to the bottom left hand side here I'm going to right click on the stroke width and I'm going to change that to 6 which gives us a nicer thickness line. So with that done I'm going to open up our paths dialog box. To do this actually, I'm going to just change back quickly to selection tool. I'm going to come up to the top, I'm going to go to path, we're going to come down to path effects and this opens up the path effects dialog box. We want to add a path effect to this line so we're going to click on the plus symbol and we get our selection panel come up. We want rotate copies. So we're going to click on this one and this gives us our rotate copies um, options down here. So the first one we've got is method. So if we click on the drop down menu we've got three different options. We've got normal which just draws um, standard copies around the circle. We've got fuse paths. This takes if the paths of our copies overlap it fuses them together much like union does in our path functions and kaleidoscope just gives you an interesting effect we we'll perhaps look at that later on so we're going to stick with normal for the time being number of copies that's how many copies are going around your circle at the moment it's set to six so we've got six copies up here what we need to do is when when they first pop up they're all overlapping we need to move the rotational center for this project we want it to be in the center of our circle so we're going to come up get the nodes tool and in the center of our little cross here we've got a, a little white handle if we drag that down this is our rotational center so we can drag that down and snap it to the midpoint and we're going to zoom in a little bit because there's two handles let's go zoom right in so we can see so we've got this little arrangement in the middle so this the one that's blue at the moment all turns red, that's our rotational center. The other one is a handle for rotating. Back out again now. The other one is just a handle for rotating our copies. So we can rotate them however we want. The angle between them is the rotational angle, which is down here on the right hand side, we've got rotation angle. So that's set to 60. So this would be 60 degrees. That's the angle between the copies. 
because at the moment we've got distribute evenly, it actually ignores what you put in here. And we just take the number of copies that you've got and spread them out evenly around the circle. So unless you turn that off, this rotational angle isn't going to make any difference. The start angle is the angle from the original object that you put on there. So as you can see, we've, we're slightly off to the right. Now, when you rotate objects, the anti-clockwise is positive. So because that's gone uh, clockwise, you're going to get a negative figure down here. So we've changed that back to zero and line them up again, like so. Um, what else have we got? Gap. Gap is just like a fine adjustment. It's not something I've used, so we won't go into that too much. We've got the origin, which is just your center point. And down the bottom, we've got distribute evenly. So that if we've got that ticked, it just spreads out our copies evenly around the circle. If we turn it off, we can then change the angle here and it spreads them out by 30 degrees and you'll just end up with a big gap on the other side. You can, of course, add more copies if you wanted to fill that up. We're going to put it back to six for the time being. I'm going to put distribute evenly back on. Next one down is mirror copies. So at the moment, all we've got is a straight line. But if we took one end of our original shape and twisted it, we can get a slightly more interesting look. So now if we turn on mirror copies, you can see that it reflects the path. So you get this interesting effect. It doesn't mean make much sense when you get an odd number of uh, copies, but when you get back to an even number, you get this reflected effect again. So we're going to turn that off for the time being. Split elements. At the moment, when you create all these copies, they're created as a compound path. So they're made up of subpaths, but they all put together as one path. If you turn that off, then they become separate paths in their own right. Oh, I've lost it now. There we go. So we we'll turn that off. Uh, reset style and set default parameters. I'm not going to cover in this, this tutorial. I'm going to drag this back round so it's back where it was. I can't remember how many we had. I think it was six in the other one, but we'll stick with the eight that we've got here. Oh, one thing I did want to show you, actually, is we drag that off to the side. You can get some really interesting effects when you move your rotational center. Admittedly, at the moment, we're only working with straight lines. But if you've got patterns, you can start creating some really interesting designs just by moving your rotational center. Anyway, we'll look at that later on. We'll put that back. we just straighten up our line so we can get back to our original design. I'm going to come over and grab the ellipse tool. I'm going to drag out, holding down control, drag out a circle. So big I do. I'm then going to get my selection tool. And I'm going to take the circle and I'm going to just pop it to the midpoint. Where is it? Somewhere in there. Rotational centers. Let's turn on midpoints. It should snap then. There we go. Um, so we're going to add the same path effect to our circle. So we're going to come down while the circle is selected. We're going to click on the plus symbol at the bottom. We're going to select our rotate copies. We've got our information come up here. So we need to do the same again. So we get our nodes tool and we can drag the rotational center down to the middle. Um, I think it was eight, wasn't it? So we, if we increase our number to eight. I want the circles to sit between the lines. Um, we've got 360 degrees in total. We've got eight lines. So 360 divided by eight is 45. So we want half of 45. So if we come over to our rotation angle, or sorry, our start angle, and we just put in there half of 45, so 22.5. And it rotates the circles around 22.5 degrees, which sticks it nice and evenly between our lines. So that's our basic design. I think 
that covers most of what we need to know about uh, rotating copies. We get on and do our rows design, I think, next. So I'm going to start on a clean, clean page. So if we're working on this, I'm going to get rid of the page border. So I'm going to come up to Document Properties. I'm clicking on the button at the top. You can go to File and down to Document Properties. And I'm just going to turn off the page border. We get rid of that. So I'm going to create my rows by creating one petal and then rotating it around the circle. And then we, we just duplicate that to create three rings. So I'm going to come over. I'm going to grab my polygons tool. I'm going to drag out an interesting star. I want a triangle. So I'm going to change the number of points up here to three. I'm going to change it from star to polygon. And I'm going to round the corners slightly. So we're just going to hold that down until we've got a nice rounded effect. Now I'm going to go up to path and object to path to turn it to a path. So if we got our nodes tool now, we can sit here and adjust our path so it's more how we want it to look. We go with that. I can't remember exactly how the, the rose was now. We turn it pink so it looks like a, a petal. So we need to turn this into our ring of petals now. So I'm going to come up to path, down to path effects. I'm going to add a path effect. I'm going to choose rotate copies and we get, I just zoom out a little bit so we can see what we're doing. And we get our, our rose petals just arranged around a circle. So I'm going to come up and grab my nodes tool. I'm then going to take the center and I'm just going to adjust this so we get a nice effect. Now we can go in and adjust our original petal. By adjusting these, we can get our petals to look exactly how we want them. We can tweak the layout of our petals until we've got our rows looking just how we want it. So I think that looks fairly pleasant. So what I'm gonna do now is come up, I'm gonna to go to Path, object to path, and we should have that. If we go back into our nodes tool now, these all have nodes around each petal indicating that they're now standalone path. So I'm going to add a bit of a gradient to this. So I'm going to come up, I'm going to click on the fill and stroke dialog box. We're going to come in and we're going to choose a radial gradient. I'm then going to come down to the gradients tool. I'm going to click on the outside stop. I'm going to make it fully opaque and we're brighten it up a bit. I'm then going to go to the inside stop and I'm going to lighten that right down. We might have to add another stop, so double click on the line to add a stop to lighten that. Select the outside stop again. I just want to richen that up a little bit. It's a little bit gloomy. There we go, that looks better. So I just want to change the stroke from black. I think I'm going to turn it to a dark red. So I'm going to get my selection tool. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to select a deepish red. That'll do me. So now we've got our basic petals. I need to create the inner rings. So what I'm going to do is with it selected, I'm going to press control D to duplicate it. I'm going to hold down control and shift, constrain the proportions and to scale it around the center. Then we can drag it in to the center. If we click on it again, we can just rotate it so it fits neatly. In our design and press ctrl d to duplicate again hold down ctrl and shift and we can drag it in and put the third ring in the middle i'm going to click on it again to get our rotational handles and just line it up so it fits neatly in our design so there's our petals or our rows now we just need a couple of leaves so to do this i'm just going to get the bezier tool and i'm just going to draw out We'll fill that in with a green. We get our nodes tool. Actually, while it's selected, we drag over all of the nodes. We smooth them. Then I'm going to add a gradient to this one as well. So I'm going to add a radial gradient. I'm going to come down, get the gradients tool. I'm going to click on the outside stop. I'm going to darken that up. Oh, actually, I'm going to make it opaque first so we can actually see it. 
then if we drag the center down to about there and I'm going to take the outside stop and I'm going to stretch one of the arms and bring that in Control Z to undo that grab that outside stop and bring that in a little bit that'll do me so I'll get my selection tool I'm just going to add a green stroke to this a dark green stroke so I'm going to hold down shift and I'll come down the bottom here I'm going to select this dark green can't actually see it so I want to change the stroke width so right click on the bottom here and we come up what does four look like right click again I think we make it six see what that looks like that's better I'm going to click on it again to get rotational centers when I take the rotational center I'm going to drag it and snap it to the center of our of our rows for some reason it's not turned on over here so we turn these back on snap it to the center of our rows then we can press Control D to duplicate and I'm just going to rotate it around till it sits nicely on the second one so we just zoom out a bit we can drag a box over all of it we can group it all together click on it again and we can rotate our rows Perhaps those petals, are, those leaves are a little bit too big. I'm going to reduce the size of those, I think. So we come in a bit and group. Click on one. I'm going to delete that one. Work on this one. So hopefully that'll be a better size. So I'm just going to duplicate that. So I'm going to press Control D to duplicate. I'm going to click on it with my selection tool to get rotation handles. We're going to get hold of the rotational center. We're going to snap it to the center of the to the rows and then we can just grab hold of a rotational handle and take it around to a new location I might move it down a bit actually I think what I'm going to do is flip it so it's the other way up so when I rotate it now it should hopefully sit quite nicely there I'm going to get my nodes tool just to give it a little bit of adjustment get my selection tool I'm just going to drag a box over all of our elements and I'm going to group them together. So to finish off, I'm just going to add a background using the rectangle tool and the gradients tool. It's a similar design, maybe not exactly the same as the, the one I showed you at the beginning. So I hope that's been helpful. I hope you can come up with some interesting designs. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.